Good morning. So I'm sitting here at the uh, supply house waiting to pick up a few materials before I head up the mountain. Figured I'd uh, kill some time and share a little story with you guys. And this is more about uh, mental health awareness than anything, I think. So yesterday I, uh, I set that Green's Elysee tile shower floor. I don't know if any of you saw that. Uh, last night I'm sitting on my couch. I'm feeling proud of myself. Give myself a few pats on the back for how awesome I am. You know, stuff like that. Things we do when we're when we think we're pretty good at our job. Well, my client texts me and he had watched my video because he usually does. He's on Instagram. He's like, dude, um, that's not the tile that goes in that shower. You're supposed to put the black stuff in there. And at first I was like, nah, I don't, I don't know if that's right. I mean, how could I screw up like that? And uh, so I, I look through the the. Uh, the drawings that he had sent me and sure enough he was right um, I was in such a good groove on this job and just kind of in the zone that I didn't even think to double check the drawings and I as soon as I saw it I remembered that I had seen it a few months back when I first got those drawings so I knew that the black limestone was supposed to go in the shower floor I just forgot and I guess got you know I don't want to say like thinking I knew it all but I just didn't think about it you know it didn't even cross my mind that I that a different tile went in there so today I get to tear up that greens of leash tile and cut some 12 by 12 black limestone down and reinstall it and um, this isn't my first rodeo so I'm not worried about it uh, I know it'll be easy not easy I know it's doable that ultralight is thick, it's cold down there, it'll still be green, it'll it'll come up pretty easily. So I'm not super concerned about it, but this is this isn't even about the tile. This is more about uh, mental health and how how to respond to things like this. And if you're if you're a business owner and you haven't had something like this happen, well, you will. Um, a lot of times. It, this is totally this is part of running a business. You know, we make mistakes, things don't go as planned, and we can handle them a couple different ways. And the older version of me would have lost a lot of sleep over this. I would have gotten that text and I would have beat myself up and I would have stewed and, and tossed and turned all night. I might've even driven up there last night and torn it out. Um, and I would have, you know, I, I would have let it affect my, my self-worth and kind of beat myself up over it. And I would have stressed about it, you know. Um, I'm not really like that anymore. It's taken me a lot of um, self-awareness and a lot of practice, actually, to change um, the way I respond to things like this. And for me now, getting that text from him, I was just like, ah, oh well. You know, it's really not a big deal. Yeah, obviously I've been thinking about it, but I'm not worried about it. Um, when a when a problem arises I look at it this way I can I can kind of compartmentalize it you know I can put it in like two different areas in my brain so I think about it and it's like okay is it something that I can fix yes it is okay so do I need to worry about it no do I need to find a solution yes but do I need to worry and stress about it no is it something I can't fix if, if it is something I can't fix then do I need to worry about it? No. What's the good? What's the use in worrying about it if there's nothing I can do about it? Really, like anxiety and worry and stressing over things that are out of our control are like a freaking slippery slope down to like mental illness. And let me tell you from experience, like worry, worrying about things that we can't control is absolutely pointless. And I've spent a lot of my life doing it and I would assume that everybody watching this can relate to that in some way or another. Um, it's just pointless, you know? It is absolutely pointless to worry and stress and be sick inside about something that we have no control over. And no matter what we do, the outcome doesn't change. With this scenario, I have control over the outcome. So no reason to worry about it. I can absolutely control how this happens. I know that I can show up there in an hour. I can pop those tiles off very carefully. You know, it'll be hard. It's not gonna be easy, but it's it's just another day at the job. You know, does it throw off my schedule a little bit? Yeah. Again, not a big deal. 
I can work a couple extra hours a few days, maybe work a Saturday and stay on schedule. So my point is, I guess, that how we respond to things is so much more important than than the problem itself. You know, this is a very minor issue, very minor hiccup in, in life, in a tile job. And these happen all the time. Just earlier this summer, I had the, almost the exact same thing happen. I laid two different batches of two by two mosaic, two different die lots on a shower floor. Didn't realize it till I got home and I was looking at my pictures to see how awesome of a tile setter I am. You know what I mean? Patting myself on the back. All of a sudden it stands out like a sore thumb, two different die lots right on the same floor. No big deal. That wasn't my first rodeo either. I knew I could show up the next day, carefully scrape them off and fix it, which I did, problem solved, no big deal. Anyway, just figured I'd kill some time while I'm sitting here waiting at the showroom and, and tell you a little story about that. Uh, this is like, you know, another day in the life for Tarkas Tile. Like, screw something up, fix it, move on. That is life, that is how I've, I've, um, gotten through a lot of my life as a tile setter and life in general not just at, not just at work but I would say I'm a, pretty much a pro at screwing stuff up and then figuring out how to fix it um, so if you're new in business or old in business if you're self-employed uh, you will encounter things like this it's really just how how you handle them that kind of defines you and your character so I love these clients they're great people when he texted me that I there was no, you know, animosity at all. I knew it was my fault and I was just like, oh, he's probably stressing over this, but hopefully he knows me well enough by now to know not to stress because he knows that I just will make it right. That's what I do. So Anthony, if you're watching this, love you, dude. You're a good dude, love working for you guys. And this project has been one of my favorites. Uh, minor setback in fact i'm actually kind of excited to see how careful i can pull this as a liege tile off of the floor and without damaging my membrane so i've kind of turned it into it turned it into a challenge i guess you could say and i'm actually really excited to get to work today and do that so i'll uh, post some progress of that later thanks for watching hope this is helpful in some way uh don't beat yourself up over mistakes they're really just there for you to learn it's all about it's all about growth and learning and you know, keeping your mental health in check. You know, don't don't let things like this ruin your inner peace. It's absolutely not worth it. It's just tile. You know, it's just tile. It is always something that we can overcome. And anyway, I gotta go buy some uh, some grout. Peace. Here we are, next day. So, um, if you want some context to what I'm sharing now. Go back and watch the reel that I posted this morning, if you care. If you don't, don't. I really don't care. But if you want some context to what's going on here, uh, go and watch that. So, I get to tear up this Zalige tile that I set last night because I screwed up. And this floor was actually supposed to get this black limestone cut into 4 by 4 So, I'm not too worried about it. My assumption is that because it's so cold in this basement and this ultralight is so thick, these will pop up without issue. I can scrape my pan clean, use my same grid because this is the same size as 12 tiles. Use my same grid, keep my same layout, cut these down, reinstall this today. So this is my first rodeo. I've had to do this before, so I have a pretty good idea of how it's going to go. So I'm gonna tear these out. Wish me luck. Okay, so this is going exactly how I hoped it would. Ultralight is, one thing I love about ultralight thin set is it takes three or four days to really get hard. Now, sometimes you want a thin set that gets extremely hard overnight. Um, most scenarios, I don't find that I need that. Ultralight takes quite a while to, to reach its full cure. And so in a situation like this, it's ideal, especially where I've got a cold basement floor. This ultralight is still really green and these Zalige tiles are popping right up just without issue. And Somebody asked to show a coverage check, so there you go, Mario. Not too bad a coverage. Um, you can see some of the Zalige breaks apart just because that clay is so soft, but I'm pretty happy with that coverage. So I will very carefully pop these up, very carefully scrape my floor, and get on with my life. Not an issue. And I can reuse these tiles too. So far this is going better than planned. Um, 
these are just coming right up because this ultralight is so green. You can see some of them are chipping, but I'll use them for cuts. So far, my membrane is intact. I'm going to carefully scrape it off and check everything really good. If I end up peeling up a little bit of membrane, I'll put a patch on it, but so far I haven't felt any of it coming up. So uh, yeah, just a little life lesson to learn here. Not a big issue. Um, I can deal with it. So happy that it's working out. I'll be able to reuse these. In fact, I'm not even gonna scrape the thin set off the backs of them because now they're actually all gauged to the to the same thickness because I built them up with thin set to get them flat. So that will actually make those easier to install. I'll just run them through the saw if I need to when that thin set's dry to scrape the edges off. So yeah, could uh, now just being extremely careful without anything sharp. This is just a worn out kind of drywall blade. It's not sharp. Super carefully just scraping the ultralight off this. If this would have been two or three days later, I'd be tearing up the whole the whole membrane, which would probably take chunks of my deck mud with it because I fresh set it. So fortunately, my homeowners and I caught this. Well, my homeowners caught it, uh, brought it to my attention. Fortunately, we caught this very next day, you know, 15 hours later. So I'm able to scrape off this green thin set and hopefully use my same grid. Again, I might even leave my drain installed if the height is right. I'll probably have to pop that and adjust it, but could have been way worse. Not a big deal. It's actually kind of fun. So I don't mind the challenge and it's always a learning experience tearing out your own work. You can see things that you could do better, see things to improve on, always good. Okay, I am super relieved and happy that that worked out as well as it did. Um, I was able to get everything up without issue. Um, I did pull up a corner just barely on the end, uh, two of them. I'm gonna patch those, fix them with either more thin set and a, and a patch of fabric or some curdy fix type of stuff. Um, I tried to leave these ones a little thicker on there. I'd rather shave the back of the tile off than try to scrape that super fine. Um, no other loose spots, no other holes. I've looked at it from two inches away on the whole thing. So really happy that that worked out good. You know, there's always a lesson to be learned in life. And this is one to just double check and don't be, uh, don't be so cocky that you think you know everything that's going on all the time. So good day. I'll take a good day like this any day. All right, now to cut down the limestone. This is a honed black limestone, really cool stuff. So I need to cut it in exactly nine pieces. So I have to be super precise. So I taped off this first tile, marked it exactly, including enough width for the blade. And I've got my guide all set up to get each piece exactly the same. Went and bought a brand new blade while I was at it. I'm not one of those blade snobs. I don't even know what brand of blade I'm using half the time. It's just whatever I come across in the shop or whoever's got something. Um, I've found that you can do great work pretty much no matter what blade you have. So for those of you who think your blade is better than everyone's, it's probably not. This one was 50 bucks and so far it's awesome. Um, anyway, now I'm gonna cut down uh, 180-ish of these. Love the way limestone smells when you cut it. Really earthy. All right, I've got all these cut down. That's about 160 um, identical four by four limestone tiles. So I'm just gonna barely micro bevel the edge. Um, I just did this one with a 200 grit. I want the tiniest bevel on it. I don't want a big bevel. I like these metal back pads from Grand Quartz. Uh, they're my favorite. I don't like using a soft backed pad when I'm trying to just micro bevel an edge. It seems like it dips in on the corners a little bit, so. Just gonna do these one at a time. I've been mixing these as I cut them, so I don't lay a bunch of the exact same tile in one area of the shower. So just gonna hold these down, micro bevel the edges. Um, this stuff smells great. If you've ever been walking through the forest and smelled like rotting leaves and sticks, uh, that's exactly what it smells like when you cut it because that's what it is, just compressed organic material from however many million years ago. But it's crazy, as soon as you cut it, it smells just like that. Kind of enjoy the smell. Anyway. All right, so these are all cut and homed. 
Everything's ready to go. I'm just working on my layout to make sure it matches my grid from yesterday. And thankfully it does like exactly perfectly. So I don't have to change anything about my grid. I can still get my layout with my, with my niche. Everything will flow with my Zalige, hopefully. So I went ahead and put a second coat of Aqua D on the walls before I cut these two, just so that's out of the way. So I used to use the crap out of these tabby spacers for years and years. That's all I used. And I have buckets full of them, but they're all in my shop and I didn't want to go there this morning. So I busted out these vintage never open bags from, I would say 2007 or so. You can see these are super old school. They're the dark green. These are maybe 2010. I used to buy these by the case. Loved them, super nostalgic for me to bust these open. Um, yeah, I don't know why I have those, but they've been in my garage and survived various moves in the last 15 years, but gonna use them today. Setting a tight joint rectified natural stone is definitely a tedious process. Uh, I like these tabby spacers because they keep everything locked in place. So as I squish a tile down, it doesn't move the one next to it. Um, kind of nostalgic, reminds me of all the, all the years of doing travertine floors that we would cut down from, from the bigger tiles. So just slow and tedious. These are also not gauged that great, so I'm having to, you know, build them up individually with thin set. So it's all good though. I'm happy with it, making some decent progress. Um, I will uh, probably finish this here and it'll be an all day affair, but that's okay. Happy to get it get it done and make it right. I do like the look of this stuff. When it cleans up, it'll be really cool. There's some fossils in there and stuff. So yeah, buddy. All right, well, that ended up being an all day affair. It's 4.30, it took me about four hours to individually set those four by four tiles after I cut them down. Uh, very tedious process, but they are super flat and tight. Got my center drain. Still hit my layout that I hit yesterday with the other tile. And it ended up being a really fun day, you know, super enjoyable. Um, you just gotta kinda eat your own cooking sometimes. That was a huge oversight on my part, but I'm not gonna let it bring me down. I'm happy, my clients will be happy. It looks good. Uh, yesterday I was a half a day ahead of schedule. Today I'm half a day behind schedule, but no big deal, it'll work out. So yeah, couldn't have asked for a better botch. If I had to botch something, I am glad that I botched it this way instead of in a worse way. So thanks for watching my drama. See ya.